Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. We're, we're going to expose this for the lie of hell that it is. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to put a little humor in there because it is so ridiculous. However, it's not funny in the sense that many people fall for it. So we're going to expose it for what it is. Oh, we have a few again, dear ones, and uh, we say good morning to you. We are happy to be back uh, with the uh, founding members, we will call you that. Uh, this is a nice uh, title. You are on the leading edge. You have stepped into leading edge material, leading edge thinking, leading edge evolution. So you should be proud of yourselves for that. Uh, much work is done prior to this step. We want you to understand this, that the consciousness evolution process is a long and slow one. Uh, it can happen quickly for some beings, but that is generally their karmic history that brings sudden and dramatic shifts. As our dear one experienced a sudden and dramatic shift, overnight success after 10 years, as she says, that is very much how it was. But this lifetime of hers is one that is arising from many other similar experiences as a teacher student of this material. A lot of new age karma, Eastern mysticism, a lot of speaking in the third person as if another entity is talking about the host in the third person, like something else is in here. Okay. But I want you to notice how it that claims to be Jesus introduces itself and speaks to the audience. So it is a practice to engage this separated world, this ex separated experience with love. That is the journey you are all on, the return to love. And so we will uh, leave it at that. Uh, we will pass our dear one over to Jesus and he will uh, continue on with his teaching and uh, letting you know what the next steps are for your training. I am returned uh, to continue on this teaching and you are... This is so blasphemous. I, I can't even stand to hear it. But if you notice, Jesus, when they asked him, how can you know Abraham? You're not even 50 years old. He says, before Abraham was, I am. He is the I am that I am of the Old Testament, the self-existing creator of all things. Manifest in human form. The son of God, the son of man, the second Adam the savior of the world. This person says, I am and you are. We are because he created us. We are not the I am, although those of us in Christ have Christ in us, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. But we in ourselves are just fallen human beings. And without the source of life dwelling in us, we're just dust in the wind, as it were. Love that song. Dust in the wind. Without, we don't have, we have to put on immortality. So what they're doing is the same satanic lie. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Say, you're going to be like God. You are God. Listen to this lie. The same subtle lie told in the garden. When Aleister Crowley summoned up this entity, it looked like one of those grays with the big head. And its name was I-W-A-S. And I said, he said his name was Iwas or Iwas. And I said, no, it's I was. It's a mocking of I am. It's evil. I don't know why people can't see this stuff. Welcome back. Uh, we are going to speak today about crucifixion. We are going to speak about that story. What happened to me on the earth as I was uh, coming to the end of my physical incarnation on this plane. 
but I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Address these channelers. Okay. These people, they're very new agey. Some of them claim to be the Galactic Federation of Light, where they claim to channel extraterrestrials. But if you listen, they're actually extra dimensional, which means they're they're not from another planet. They're from the spirit realm. They're from another dimension. And this is scriptural. The Bible talks about the host of heaven. There are many different kinds of them. Uh, and these people are channeling them, meaning they are willfully allowing these spirits to possess their bodies and speak through them. Channeling. The uh, Hindu people would call them avatar and avataras. Thank you, Gary Wayne. Uh, he explained the difference to us on um, a couple of appearances on our Thursday Theological Throwdown. Um, avatar and avatara. One is the person whose body is being filled with the spirit of another entity. And the other one is the entity going into the body. Um, and it's willful. Possession is when a spirit takes the body against the overt will of the person. So, nonetheless, there is some sort of agreement that has to allow the door to open in some way. Either through a parent who has um, authority over a child or through um, themselves messing around with the occult or what have you. So, um, and I will, we'll talk about some of those cases later. I was very sad. The um, exorcism of Emily Rose was supposed to be the true story of Annalise Michelle. And her Catholic doctrine was so twisted that she wanted them to stay like she was suffering for other people's salvation. Uh, honey, you ain't Christ. See, this is the problem. And they tricked her into letting them stay and destroy her till she died. And priest went to jail for it. Just ugly evil all around. In this particular situation, I need you to put your spirit ears on. Now, obviously, there's going to be some overt lies. As a Christian, we have the scriptures. Now, some, some may be babies and don't know scriptures very much. These are the ones you got to be careful. This is why I avoid this. I would uh, pray before even listening to what these devils have to say. But And I did. So um, I want to point it out to you because this is subtle. So we need to understand his character and how he shows up. That may not be him personally, as in Satan. Just means adversary, the opponent, right? The enemy. Uh, but people always think he's going to show up ugly and scary and if it's beautiful or kind of shows any kind of love or elevated thinking that it's not the devil. Oh my goodness, that's exactly who it is. And we're warned what he looks like. And yet people, it still goes right over their head. See, the problem with this person, like they're channeling this entity, and it's going to infuriate you because it claims to be Jesus Christ himself. They have an entity called Sananda. Now, on this one, it says Ananda, but it's false. They change their names so much. And if you listen to five other people that claim to channel him, he'll say different things. And ultimately, you'll get to a bit of truth that Lucifer is the head of all of them. And that he just got a bad rap. That he's really man's advocate. Okay. This is how Helena Blavatsky from the theosophical, like theosophy, came about. She was channeling these things. Same thing, Alistair Crowley, Alice Bailey, all of these New Age mysticism. I would even lump uh, Islam and uh, Mormonism in with this in some ways because they got their revelation from an angel from heaven too. Now, we, we've got to look at what the motivation is. If the devil's going to attack anything, it's going to be the truth of Scripture, the person and victory of Jesus Christ as God manifest in the flesh, the Son of God, human and God, pre-existing, always will exist, 
and most of all, salvation by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. This is what he's going to attack. The work accomplished on the cross. So listen very carefully to this. Now, some of these things like Judas being a good guy, all this stuff was popular in uh, the Middle Ages with this philosophy and some kind of uh, Gnostic ideas and stuff. Uh, so it's not new, okay? It's the same lie. But the point is, the same lie that's being told is, yea, hath God said, okay? So it's very subtle, and he will mix lies with truth. So you're going to find nuggets of truth. Now, I'm going to try to point those out. I'm not going to stop this thing every two seconds, all right? I want you to hear what they're saying. Put yourself in the mind of a lost person and how easy it would be to fall for this. This image of the crucified Jesus permeates your society and it permeates your mind. The idea of suffering has been planted in the mind, has been fed and nurtured for particular gain by ruling hierarchical structures. So we will travel back in time so that you can understand what my experience was, what my purpose was in demonstrating this, what has appeared from the outside to be a catastrophically negative act. In my incarnation, uh, in my teaching ministry, there was an energy building. <clears throat> it was a powerful time. A revolutionary time. I was a revolutionary. I was not a well-behaved, quiet rabbi teaching quietly. I was out and about inspiring, upsetting, disrupting. That is uh, uh, my idea of a good time. Going into a society, much as I am coming into this one, to cause ripples, to upset the apple cart. This is how the mind is shifted. The mind is deeply entrenched in its attitudes. It is deeply entrenched in its fears. And it will stay cowering in those dark places unless a light is shone on it. But the light being shone on a mind that has been in darkness, a light that is shone into a heart that is closed uh, is painful. Just as you turn on your light uh, in the middle of the night, the eyes and the body recoil from that. The spirit is the same when it is habituated to darkness, when it is habituated to fear, when it is habituated to judgment. These opposing forces of love and opening, communication, communion, terrify it. So it must be brought at times forcefully into societies where these fears have won, where these fears have taken over the collective consciousness and so that is the realm into which I ventured uh, so long ago. I was building a ministry based on two teachings. The teachings that I brought to ordinary men and women in public. Simple people, uneducated people. Translated into the parables that you are so familiar with. And there was another ministry. There was a private ministry where I spoke uh, unadulterated truth to men and women. Women were not allowed to be taught in public. Uh, they were generally women who were partners, daughters, wives of uh, men who were following the teachings, opening their minds and hearts and allowing, for that is the state of uh, uh, the male-female relationship at that time, allowing those women to share in this experience. It was clear to me that it was women who were going to change the psyche of the next generation. They were the ones who were teaching the children. They were the ones who were constantly training the youngsters. And so I insisted on this taking place in this form. But from the outside, the ministry looked patriarchal. It allowed me to continue for a little while. It was not going to be permitted for long. I was uh, well aware of that. A full two years before I was crucified, I knew that I would be taken out, so to speak. Uh, my personal 
relationships suffered because of that, but it was an assignment that I had been prepared for my entire life and was taking it with a grain of salt because of my understanding, because of my awareness of consciousness and the uh, fallibility of the body, the unnecessary uh, need for the body, the pain and suffering that the body in an unawakened mind causes. This is also one of the ways these entities get people to unalive themselves to the point where they look forward to the trip. Yes, it's wicked. The way they do that is to say that flesh is evil, that you're limited in a body. Now, I want to point out, Jesus is not a disembodied spirit. He rose physically in a glorified body three days after his death, burial, and his resurrection was in a glorified body. He was not Casper the Friendly Messiah. Okay? He was in a physical body and told Thomas, put your hand on my side. So the goal, and Paul tells us, is not to be unclothed but to put on a new body, immortality, the celestial body. So it's not to be unclothed. Our goal is not to ascend into a spirit form with no body. All right? That's a lie. These were things that I was aware of. I was not fearful in the way that most people imagined. There was a direct contact with non-physical for those years that I was teaching and learning. I was still learning. I was learning how to negotiate large crowds of people. I was learning how to be courageous in dangerous circumstances. I was learning to look after myself. I had never experienced the kind of consciousness that I had after my enlightenment before. When it happens, it is a completely new language. It is a completely new experience. It takes time. There were times when I was overwhelmed by the work that I was being asked to do. There were times when I just wanted to close the door of my home and be an ordinary person because it was too much for me. I went through the ordinary feelings and emotions that any human would go through because that is what I was. I became an enlightened human, but I was human nonetheless. But these years leading up to my crucifixion were limited. I knew they were limited. The trouble I was causing, the message that I was bringing, the vibration that I was expressing could not be tolerated by the repressive regimes that were in control of that area of the world at the time. But my experience in the physical body was such an exceptional one. I was leaving my physical body, traveling, if you will, in the astral form, able to uh, speak and converse with people while I was meditating elsewhere. They would see my physical structure as if it was real. And so you must bring this understanding to the story of the crucifixion. I had, by the time uh, my uh, death uh, became required, it was required on several levels. The political regimes, the religious systems of the time uh, had conspired to bring this ending about. But I too was collaborative in the ending. It was a teaching opportunity beyond... Uh, uh, most beings' ability to understand my teachings with the disciples that you are familiar with had come to a point where they now had to be on their own. They were looking to me to solve their problems. They were looking to me for salvation. How ironic that that is what has happened over the last thousands of years that people look to me for salvation and it is not in me. It is in your own mind. It is in your own self-knowledge. 
They're going to attack salvation through Jesus Christ. The very reason he came. Now, all the Old Testament prophets foretold. That's why it says that Christ died for his sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. Because the scriptures foretold it. Okay? Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. They pierced my hands and my feet. Oh, Father, uh, uh, remember when he said, um, why have you forsaken me? That is Psalms. He's quoting. It's fulfilled right now. So, all the Old Testament pointed us to Christ. Let's see what Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, actually said. Is it uh, terrible that people think uh, salvation's in me and not in themselves? Isn't that what the devil said? Yea, hath God said, and you shall be as God? Come on, people are falling for this. Let's look what Jesus said in John 6. Uh, yeah, John 6. We're going to start here at 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Once again, this is a foreshadow of Christ. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread bread from heaven so the stuff that was raining down from the heavens that you ate all those years in the wilderness is a picture of me that's what he's telling them for the bread of god is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world then they said unto him lord evermore give us this bread then jesus said to them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger he that believeth on me shall never thirst sure sounds like uh, he's saying he's the solution and Jesus said to them I am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger he that believeth on me shall never thirst sounds like eternal life to me let's continue but I said unto you that you have also seen me and believe not all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out for I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. This person's making it sound like he had his own will, and he, he was a rebel. And now, he was a rebel to their, you know, their religious, pharisaical self-righteousness. But he was obedient unto death on the cross, never sinned, came in the form of sinful flesh. Yes, he was human. But he was God manifest in the flesh. This is what people can't get. He was God and man. He set aside, humbled himself, set aside some of those divine attributes to experience life as a human, to be obedient, even obedient unto death of the cross. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews didn't mur then murmured in him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And then they started saying, isn't he, isn't he Joseph's kid or something? And he's explaining to them, uh, you're, you're not my sheep. That's why you can't understand what I'm saying. Now, Here's another place. He tells in John 11, he tells Lazarus' sister, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let's see what Peter says in Acts, okay, about salvation overtly. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, this is Acts 4, starting at verse 8. Ye rulers... And of Israel, let me say, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Who is the liar? This is so 
horrifically satanic. And that problem arose in my lifetime. Beings who, through uh, an inability to understand <clears throat> non-dualism, an inability to comprehend that the body is not real and that the being you see in a body is not more powerful, not more holy, not more divine than you. You all suffer from this. You have heroes and uh, those beings you look down on. It is the same idea. It is the same system. That was taking place within the minds of my disciples and they were uh, not progressing anymore. The system in which I was preaching was not going to allow this anymore. And so a decision was made long before the event that that is how I would leave. But it would not be the story that you have been told in religion. It was my demonstration of my lack of attachment to the physical. I was no longer attached to the physical in any way. I could manifest a new body. I could travel through time space in a way that seemed magical, in a way that seemed divine. There are many demonstrations of this in other cultures, but in this particular culture, that demonstration is not common. It is not common because you are forbidden from practicing that which I taught. You are forbidden from training the mind, and that has been long in the making in your society. And that is why the story is coming out now, because to change your society... You must understand the society is built on these untruths. This society is built on the history of the Christian church. That is what it is built on. It is built on stories about me being sacrificed, being uh, suffering. This implies that this is a noble act to sacrifice and to suffer, to behave yourself so the stories of my rebellion, the bad behavior, uh, have been deleted, removed. There are occasional ones in there that allow you to see a glimpse into my temperament. But my temperament was not a quiet, uh, well-behaved one. It could not be a quiet, well-behaved one with the assignment that I had to accomplish on this plane. I had to be strong. <clears throat> I had to be independent. I had to... <clears throat> listen to the guidance that I was receiving and act upon it without care for judgment of, of or by others. And so when this uh, betrayal transpired, it was not a betrayal. It was part of the design. We will speak about Judas a little bit here because he too has had a bad rap, so to speak. His destiny was to play that role, but he was a dear friend of mine and I loved him very much. I knew the role that he would play. It was not a surprise. I had been told the role that he would play in this drama. And so I loved him as I loved my other brothers. He was not reviled by me in any way, shape or form. His passing was difficult for him because until he left this plane, he did not know the part he played. He believed that he had killed his good friend. We met uh, in the non-physical very shortly after his passing. And uh, he was given complete understanding. And uh, he did, however, have a difficult time for a little while. But love is always ready to receive you when you pass over into the non-physical. And it was the same for him. He could truly grasp what was happening in that moment. In terms of the resurrection, it was not the same body. The body that was killed was demanifested, a new one was manifested. And I continued to teach, in fact, on the earth for many years after that experience. There are tales of being seeing me, and that is true. I did not stay in that particular location 
for very long because of uh, humans' inability to understand. They would go into fear of demons and possession. They would go into a place where uh, my demonstrating aliveness after that experience would not help them. And this is an important thing for you to understand on your journey. You must not try and teach people who are not ready to be taught. You must demonstrate your own practice. You must demonstrate your own evolution of mind. And those that are curious, those that are of that level will find you. You are a beacon of love. That is what you will become. You will share that experience moment by moment in your ordinary days with the beings that live and around you and with you and encounter you. And they will see a difference in you. And those that are ready, those that are curious, those that can have that dialogue will approach you. They will talk to you. They will query you on what you are doing. And so that journey away from that center happened for that reason. We, indeed, we did in fact go to France. That was our destination. Yes, I was married. Yes, I had children. Two children. Well, we know who inspired the Da Vinci Code, don't we? Uh, it's clear in scripture. Jesus had no children. It's prophesied he'd have no children. It's in two places, but the main place and the one in the New Testament is just quoting from here. So I'm going to give it to you in Isaiah 53. It talks about this. Let's go to Isaiah 53. This is a famous messianic section foretelling of how Jesus would carry our sin in his body, be bruised, beaten, by his stripes were healed, and he'd do it for us, for our peace with God. Now, Isaiah 53, 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. This is it. Who shall declare his generation? Meaning, he has no kids. They, they kill him. He, he doesn't have any generations. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with believing... Isaiah, the true prophet, for 200, Alex? We uh, moved, if you will, to a different place. I continued my relationship with my wife for several years, but there was a great call to the non-physical for me. Uh, the vibration of the enlightened being is not of this world. There are many, many other worlds, if you will, levels of consciousness that call to you once you have accomplished that vibrational shift. And it is difficult to stay in this place. You feel it even as you raise your vibration through your own learning. You feel yourself unable to go to places that are of a lower vibration. You cannot go there anymore. And it was the same for me. But I continue to live in the physical teaching in a real physical body. This was not a ghostly image. This was not uh, something that you could put your hand through. I appeared completely as a normal body because your body is manufactured by your mind. I had the ability to manufacture it as a conscious act. You are doing it as an unconscious act. We are taking you towards the ability to do it consciously and invite to dine with you at your table frequently. Your fears are coddled. Your fears are nurtured. And so they grow strong and they grow powerful. And you do not understand your part in their development. You do not understand that you are the creator. The creative mind untrained still makes things. It creates things all the time. You are, in fact, making your body, your world, your experience. You are not aware of it because of the level of consciousness that you hold at this time. But as you forgive, as you raise your vibration, as you stop acting in separation vibration by your demonstration of love through the practice of forgiveness... 
you will experience new things, you will tap into new realms, you will be able to bring in understanding that heretofore you have not been able to do. And so these principles that your society is based on, coming from that story, have kept you small. You have believed that you are not divine, that these other beings are more special. This reinforces your lack of self-love. This reinforces your powerlessness. To believe that God killed his only begotten son as a sacrifice terrifies the mind. It makes you feel so afraid to approach what you would consider God that you stay in the lower consciousness realms because if that happened to the beloved son, then what is going to happen to you? Surely this God that killed his own son will kill you for you are imperfect in your own vision. You do not understand what you are. You have been told lies about what you are. And so salvation becomes fear and littleness and limitedness become safe and that is the story that grows out of that mythology of the crucifixion told in the way that the church tells it how can you trust a god that would do that it is not logical it is not sound thinking just a reminder that one of the fruits of the holy spirit it's a sound mind, but let's look at what 1 Corinthians says about this logic, all right, this thinking. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And I might say, greater than the tricks of the enemy as well. And the mind knows that. It feels that. It is aware of the untruth hidden in that story. And yet your society is deeply indoctrinated into that story and has been for a very long time. And so you find your own intuition, your own guidance system saying one thing and your entire society saying something else. Who are you going to favor? Who are you going to side with? You must side with the entire society because you have also been told that you are a sinner. You are not divine. These two stories work hand in hand with each other. And it is only in the writing of that story, the telling of that story, the bringing forth of true information so that you can understand that I was an ordinary man brought to a level of consciousness through a d designed and preordained practice that you too can understand that you are able to go on that journey. You are here on that journey listening to the story. When you listen to the story, your mind begins to shift. You begin to change your consciousness just hearing the story. For those beings who believe the story, hook, line and sinker, these retellings will cause a great deal of difficulty in the mind 
because their entire self-concept is built on that story. So understand that as you travel through your own transformation, that any time you encounter someone who is deeply invested in the Christian story, the story of the divine son of God, the Jesus, the Christed Jesus as a special being, you are going to encounter resistance and tremendous fear. Be aware of this before you begin those conversations. Make sure that if you are speaking to someone that they are on a level of consciousness to understand what you are sharing. Do not share this with beings who are not there with you. There is no point. It is like speaking a foreign language to someone who does not comprehend. You are merely going to frustrate yourself and upset the other person. Again, your responsibility is to change your own mind. Your responsibility is to begin to look at what effect this new retelling has on your opinion of your society, on your opinion of your own uh, powerful creative self. And we want you to work with that story internally and without broadcasting it to others. This being has decided to do that job. This being has uh, courage. This being has uh, designed a life, a consciousness to do this work. You are not being asked to do this work, but you are being asked to do your version of this work internally and in your own experience. So trust in the internal process. It is internal before it is external. This channeling experience has been long in the making, a lifetime in the making. Do not mistake it for a quick fix. You are not going to fix things quickly, but we are nibbling at the structure of your society because to build a new society, to bring love in, to transform the minds of your society, we must give you the truth on which to build that society. You are looking at the result of lies and repression and control at play in your world. That is what you are seeing in the systems that are at play here. These are the systems that were designed originally to oppress, to repress, to control. And you have been manipulated through education, through conditioning programs to behave in a certain way. Just as beings on the earth plane when I was incarnated were trained to behave in a certain way. And if you instill enough fear in the mind, if you threaten enough people, if you kill enough people, you can control many, many minds. But one mind connected to source, one mind connected to truth can change your entire world. And that is what we want you to begin to think about as you are doing this work, as you are facing your fears, you are preparing yourself to become the one mind that can change the world. And it is possible. It is within your grasp in this lifetime. But it takes as much work to transform your mind and align it with love and truth as has been put into training you into fear and littleness. And you must understand that as you go on this journey. I just want to point it out and I'll give you verses on it. But listen carefully. It's going to prop up Eastern mysticism, karma, reincarnation, but you're going to hear other channelings, and I'll do it another day, that contradict it because they're full of confusion. So before we go forward, let's get a little bit of scripture on who the devil is and how we recognize him, okay? I need people to see this because they quote it, but they're not listening. Meanwhile, a guy in a three-piece suit with a theolog theology degree because he looks right and uses Christianese, he's a man of God. Boy, you better get real and figure out what these things look like. They're not going to look like some drug-addled stoner. They're going to look like a theologian with a PhD. Well-respected. The world will love them. I don't know why people keep falling for this. All right. Let, let's look at it. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. All right? Now, there's, there's false prophets coming in, undoing the work of Paul, trying to claim there's some kind of experts. They're Judaizers, trying to put people into bondage of the law. He says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, 
that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Maybe not, not married to Moses and every other thing, but to Jesus alone. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled, that is to trick or to mesmerize, Eve through his subtlety. So what we're looking for are subtle lies. So what does that mean? There's going to be a nugget of truth in there so that you let the lie slide. All right? Oh, yeah, that's true. And you absorb the lie with it. Okay? Be careful. It's subtle. I mean, if you want to get down to the roots of it, it has nothing to do with you. All right. He defeated death. So, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Now, this is what I want you to look out for today. This other Jesus. The Jesus this person is claiming to be is not the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. And let me just say, it's it's fine. Islam can say our Bible's corrupt. It's not. We have all the original Old Testament scriptures dated way before Jesus' uh, existence. We have tens of thousands of every book that we can compare. If there's a verse or a word that's not in the other manuscripts, they italicize it to let you know 20%, 40% don't have this verse. That's how honest it is. So you can track back and we know what was in the scriptures because we have enough ancient letters written with pieces of the scripture in them to know they haven't changed. So it's real easy to say, but it's a lie. Okay? It's a lie. Our scripture has not been changed. So, they preach another Jesus. It's one different than what the scriptures tell us. Okay? This other Jesus won't be Savior. This other Jesus may not be the Son of God. This other Jesus may not have been human and God. But it's going to be claiming to be this Jesus. Just like the one in Islam claims to be Isa, the same Jesus, the, the son of Mary, the Messiah, but denies he's the son of the living God, denies he was crucified, denies the actual message. So every time the message they come to destroy is what? Salvation in, in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel message that is everlasting, that has been from the garden in Genesis. He, God slew a lamb right there, slain from the foundation of the world to cover Adam and Eve. It is nothing new. It just wasn't clearly revealed yet. We see it all in the Old Testament. All right, so this is what they're going to attack. So, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, like this one, which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Can some things be true at the same time? Two things, yes. But that the fallacy is to say one thing is true and therefore this isn't. All right, let me explain. This entity claims that, you know, the message of Christ or the Bible itself has been used as a religion to do evil things and have control and power over man. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. There have been corrupt men. All it does is affirm the the Bible that man is corrupt and evil, of course. But it goes on to imply that because man has done this, then the teachings of Scripture are also false. No. The Scriptures can be true. And also, men can use this as power over other people and use it in an evil way. They can both be true. It doesn't mean because men have used religion as bondage to control others that the Scripture isn't true. It's ridiculous. So be careful of these kinds of arguments. So I want you to see, look out for this stuff, okay? And I'm sorry it's so long, I'll try to chop it up because I go off on tangents. But uh, let's listen to, to what this entity claiming to be Jesus, and I'm going to tell you, my heart sank 
my throat closed up. I was so angry. Listen to this. I'm sorry I'm putting you through this, but I need people to understand how subtle. And he is a liar. Okay. That's another attribute the Lord himself gave the enemy. And I I do want to show you that. In John, he says, when he's talking about these Pharisees that are rejecting Christ, and um, Jesus asks them, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, ye are of your father, the devil. Because they're claiming they're children of Abraham. He goes, no, you're not. You're not children of Abraham because of your bloodline. You're children of Abraham by faith. And they didn't believe in him. So, you have your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. That's what he's saying. You can't believe the truth because there's no truth in you just like there's none in your father. These people, I'm sad to say, heart breaks for them. They are deceived and deceiving others. They are completely taken over. I would pray for these people. Now, the problem with being deceived is that you don't know you are. You don't know you are, and you will fight tooth and nail to prove you're not. But they are. They're allowing devils to enter their body, claiming to be ascended masters and extraterrestrials. They are clearly devils, demons, fallen angels, entities, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but it's evil. Okay? They're not aliens. Why would an alien care about Jesus Christ? He wouldn't. They're not down here fighting against the Mahabharata and Hinduism. They're propping up Eastern mysticism and other practices that God forbids. Exactly why? Because it allows stuff like this in our heads and in our bodies to corrupt us and defile us. So, I pray you hear this. This is not to be mean. God help these people before it's too late. It's really horrible what's happening here.